this is the beginning of a fairly long and fairly annoying tale. <laughs> That's my son, you That happened not long ago. So, my family lives over yonder ocean, and, and so for many years, we had been planning a, a journey to see them. And so, with the help uh, of the oracle known only as Google, we were able to find a dragon tamer that can get us to dr dragons, able to take us across the ocean and to our families. Now, the first time we came, the dragons worked perfectly and had no loose fire breath, no broken legs for no reason, no dragon tamers just deciding to stay home and get drunk. And there we end. Next. Who's next? You pick someone. Whoever wants to come out. Whoever wants to come out. Well, with no one drunk on our journey, we have no sure guide. We always know to follow the Man or woman or horse or dog with the bug. And so we shall hear. <laughs> we were quite excited because this journey was going to bring us to a great treasure. What sort of treasure, you may ask? What sort of treasure? treasure? treasure Daddy. You see, the treasure was friendship. Yes. At the end of this journey, we were going to find a people so gracious, so generous, kind, and loving to a group of wayward bards <laughs> that we knew our fortunes would be made. Next. And along this journey, we knew that we would have many perilous challenges within our way. Why, once we came to the base of a tall, tall hill. We knew that there was a village atop where we could rest for the night. So we started to go up the trail that had been blazed, but alas, some rocks came down and blocked our way. We attempted to climb over, but it was too much for some of the bars, and a good bard never leaves his friends behind. So we had to make our way back down the trail and forge our own way. We thought perhaps we could move around the mountain. And sure enough, around the mountain was a, sh a Sherpa who was willing to take us his own special way up, though we may have to go through some less than desirable passages involving spiders and webs and orcs of all different kinds. But <laughs> surely we knew that we could make it. Travesties and travails are a common part of most journeys, but sometimes it is the simplest of acts on a journey that becomes the most complicated. As, the, as our bardic friends traveled along this long and winding road through the various sundry caverns full of spiders, by the way, in that instance, it's not so much who's going to run fast, it's, it's can I run faster than you? Um, <laughs> as we pass through this, this space, one of our number realized that the call of nature was upon them. And so, realizing that they'd better get done quickly because if they did not, they would be left behind and then we wouldn't have to worry about who was running the fastest. Uh, they took a quick, brief sojourn off into the woods in order to use the restroom. Uh, while they were there, they ran across an answer to the age-old question, does a bear defecate in the woods? The answer to this question is yes, they do, and they don't like being interrupted in the middle of it. So our friend who had gone off to use the facility suddenly found himself with a very hairy companion. He takes one look at his hairy companion, the hairy companion takes one look at him and goes, dinner. <laughs> and our party friend goes, catch me first, and takes off running. And as fast as they can go, he's running as fast as he can. He can't make it. He's trying to hide from the bear. And unfortunately, bears have a very good sense of smell. So what would befall our friend? This is an excellent question. 
And as our friend looks for a hiding spot, he finds a shady tree with plenty of foliage and realizes, I don't know how to climb a tree. He tries, <laughs> but his, the soles of his shoes are too slippery, his hands are too delicate to hold on to the rough branches without immense pain, and he fears that he could never play the ukulele again should he climb this tree. <laughs> so this tree is not a good hiding spot. He finds a big rock, and he says, I could hide behind the rock. He runs around the rock, and then he has the realization, wait a minute, this is just a rock. If I can go around it, so can the bear. Any good bard knows, though, that the correct answer is always the third answer. <laughs> so he sits there and thinks, I tried the tree, I tried the rock, neither of those worked. Whatever my third option is will surely work. And then the bear catches up to him while he's thinking, and he realizes he should have been faster at improv. <laughs> so then the bear says, once again, the bear approaches the man and says, dinner, and the man is terrified. And then the, bar, the bear said, I apologize, I should have clarified, I meant... I have leftovers. I want to eat them all before they go bad. Would you like to share dinner with me? <laughs> and that is how our party of bards added a very well-mannered bear to their group up the mountain. Now, of course, everyone knows that a group of bards and a bear, that's going to end up being a dancing bear. I mean, we <laughs> have a group of bards and a dancing bear. And if that's not the start of a rap sing bog song, I don't know what it is. But I'm not going to do that to the audience because I'm not that cool. In contrast to some, who I will not be. Rattling bear, bog, bards, back up that hill. Because the rest of the bards were still waiting. And waiting. And waiting. Do you know how long bards can wait? Not very long, by the way. Bards cannot wait very long. With bards, we have to wait very long, especially if we have unaccompanied bards. <laughs> okay, I, I don't need to tell you what happens if there are unaccompanied bards. I could hear from the company. I could hear everyone. That should happen. So we have a bear, a bard, a company, and a hill. All the way up. This time, it goes a little bit easier because we have a bear. Bear leads true breaks all the branches, and we end up at the top of our desired mountain, at a very friendly village, where we can sing for our supper. Which we then happily did, because it was a village at the top of a mountain. What do you know is at the top of a mountain in a village? A fire pit, <laughs> right? It's a fire pit. And what do bards love more than anything in the world? Oh, so fire, fire pit and beer. beer. Yes, <laughs> There also is beer at the fire pit, because this is our fire pit. So at the top of this mountain, in a glorious overlook, in this lovely village full of lovely, welcoming people that love all bards. It's a bard village, people. We have <laughs> the fire pit of all fire pits. Never ending chairs and benches. Nobody has to look for chairs. They're all comfortable chairs. <laughs> yes. Yes. They're all comfortable. Our backs and our butts are happy as our voices are. And that makes everybody else's happy. And we look out on the beautiful, beautiful mountain views and we sit around the fire and we tell stories and sing songs because those are the bards that we are. And we feast because there's always food at a bardic thing, right? And the same here. I have a sneaking suspicion that this story could keep going. I, I, I can keep it going if you <laughs> and the moral of the story is, young bards, if you are looking for kindness, food, companionship, and a place to perform, and a come to Atlantia! Woo!